Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another mini course from Israel Automation on Playwright with C Sharp .NET. And in this course, we are going to fully cover the basics of Playwright along with some of the advanced concept of Playwright with C Sharp .NET language binding. I have been talking about Playwright for quite a long time, at least from the day Puppeteer was released, like three years before, and how the transformation happened to Playwright and how a lot of companies are now starting to migrate towards Playwright. And in this course, we are going to address some of the most important language binding, which is C Sharp .NET and how we can leverage the power of Playwright with C Sharp .NET language binding. So this course is not about some of the theories that you can really expect, like how I can talk about some of the theories of Playwright. It's completely blank. I have not even prepared the slide for that. Well, the complete detail about the Playwright is available in their own website, playwright.dev. If you just go there and then if you just select the language bindings, you can see that they already have for Node.js, Python, Java and .NET. And the one which we are going to talk about is for the .NET language binding. And you can see some of the details about what Playwright is all about if you have never really heard about. It's a tool to support cross browsers and it is cross platform. It has different language bindings as it names and also it supports testing of mobile web as well as the native mobile emulation of Google Chrome for Android and mobile Safari. And also it has so many different features as you can see over here and you can see there are different language bindings. You can just go into those documentations and then you can hit this get started to learn about some of the details that we are going to be talking about in this particular lecture. Well, if you really want to get into some of the deep details before even watching this particular video, I would recommend you to go directly to this particular website and then start exploring by yourself. But if you really wanted to learn how I actually use within my project and how I teach people about the playwright this video is going to help you well in order to get started with the playwright I have already created an execute automation playwright.net repo within here and then I'm going to clone this particular repo and then I'm going to start writing code on my machine so in order to do that I'm just going to do this git clone and I'm going to clone it over here and then you can see that my directory has been cloned and then I'm going to start writing the code so in order to start writing the code, or in order to start even creating the project over here, the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to create this .NET new of the project that we wanted to create. If you really wanted to go with a console, something like this, you can do that. But actually, if you are kind of new to the .NET world itself, you can really just hit this hyphen hyphen list to see what are the different templates which are available for you to support creating the projects within this particular dot net world and you can see that there is something called as n unit 3 with test items n unit 3 test projects something like that so basically it's n unit so we can use this as well so we can just do this dot net new of n unit and then we can give it a name something like this and then we can give it like playwright demo and this is going to create a visual studio project for us and now if i just do and ls you can see that we have a folder called as playwright demo where you can actually see that it has a cs proj unit test 1.cs and an opt folder well you can use any ide of your choice you can use vs code visual studio 2022 or rider ide i'm actually going to be using rider because it's super good so i'm just going to open rider ide so i'm going to go to this particular directory where i have actually created the project and i have opened the rider ide right now so you can see that the project has been created and you can see that this is the usual .NET world of templating that available for the particular project. This is for the end unit project template. And now we need to install the Playwright itself. In order to install the Playwright, you can just right click the dependencies and go to the manage NuGet package. This is exactly the same in Visual Studio as well. And then you can start finding the package that you're looking for. Well, I'm looking for the Playwright. So if I just type P-L-A-Y w you can see that it is already showing the playwright sharp something like that it is the older package but now microsoft has acquired that project so now it is called as microsoft playwright so i'm going to choose this microsoft playwright but actually i'm going to be using this microsoft.playwright.in unit because it has really a lot of power which i will quickly show you but first of all let's install this playwright in unit over here and then let's start playing around with it so now the package has been installed let's start writing the code itself so in order to start writing the code all i'm going to do is let's first understand some of the basic concepts of the playwright playwright actually holds what is called as a package basically the playwright package comes with different sort of browsers like firefox chrome safari webkit or whatever browser that you name it everything is going to sit into this particular package so we need to create an instance of the playwright itself which once we call it in our code, it is going to download all the browser's drivers for us. Pretty much like Selenium Web Driver. 
So if you have Selenium Web Driver, and once you open the Selenium Web Driver, it's going to look for the Chrome Driver or H Chrome Driver or whatever driver that you specify. You have to explicitly download the drivers as a separate package and do it. But in Playwright, it is going to do things for you automatically. That's about the other good thing about the Playwright itself. And once you download all the different browser drivers, then we are going to work with what is called as a browser instance. And once we have this browser driver, we are then going to open the page within this particular browser. So it's going to be a page. So that's how the architecture of the Playwright is going to even look like. So once we have the page, the rest is pretty much similar to how we work with Selenium. Well, we're going to identify the element within the page, then we're going to perform the operation on the DOM elements. Those things remain the same. There is no change on that. That's what we are going to be doing in this particular course. So I'm going to save this architecture. It's already there in our code repo as well. So you can see this in our GitHub repo. Now that we have the idea about the architectures of how the Playwright code is even being designed and stuff, let's start really writing the code and see how it actually works. In order to start writing the code, we need to first of all create the first thing, which is going to be the Playwright, which I was talking about, which is the package which downloads all the different browser drivers for you. So in order to do that, we're going to use the usings because it's going to destroy the Playwright instance once the execution is done. So I'm going to create what is called as Playwright is equal to await. Well, the Playwright itself is basically an asynchronous. Well, as we know, the Playwright is actually originally a JavaScript based tool and it's been ported to C sharp. It is still using the same asynchronous fashion of coding. So the speed will be much, much faster, not like Selenium. And that's why if you're going to be using an asynchronous code in C sharp language, we have to use this keyword called as await. That is very, very important. And once we use this await, we can then start writing the code over here like we can call the playwright and then we can ask this create async method which is going to start downloading things for us from the internet basically that's what is going to happen over here if i call this create async method of playwright but you will see that there is a scroll line in here for the await the reason why it happens is because await can only be used within an asynchronous method and the method that we have in the internet is not an asynchronous method it's a non async method so in order to make this method as an async method we are going to use this keyword called as async and then we need to use a system dot threading dot tasks keyword over here so that it can become an asynchronous method for us now that we have an asynchronous test method and also an first asynchronous test code so once i have this code basically it is going to start downloading things for you. If we just go to the definition of this particular code, you can basically see that it is going to perform some connection dot dispatch dot deserialization. And then it is going to start doing a connection operation. Basically, that's what this whole thing is going to be really happening behind the scenes for you. And it's going to basically initialize the playwright. And then it's going to configure a wait to false. Basically, it's going to wait until the connection is fully established. And the downloading of the driver really happens behind the scene. That's what this is basically doing. And once I have this playwright, the next thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to open the browser. So in order to play around with the browser, I'm again going to use the await var of the browser where I'm going to say await playwright, this guy, and I'm going to say playwright dot browser, which I'm looking for. So once I have downloaded the browsers, the next thing is I need to use those browser drivers, right? So I'm going to use Chromium, for example, and then I'm going to use this method called as launch async so you can see that because this is an asynchronous code every single method is going to have a suffix of async in it so that's the launch async for us and then once the browser is being launched the next thing is the page as we saw in the diagram there so we're going to use what is called as page is equal to a weight of browser dot new page async and that's where the page creation is really, really happening. And then once we have this particular page, we can then start using it. And you can see that I'm not really using the using keyword for the page. The reason being, we actually need to use this particular object right now across all the methods. So let's see how we can do it. And now I'm going to do this await of page dot. And then we need to perform what is called as a navigation to that particular side that we are about to test which is going to be go to async so i'm going to write a very very super simple code in here so i'm going to say http colon double slash www.eaapp.tommy.com that's going to navigate me to this particular page and once it navigates to the particular page i then wanted to 
perform a click operation. So how do I perform a click operation? Just call this click method. Again, once again, you note that everything is async over here as a suffix because it's an asynchronous code. I need to use this await to make sure that the code really waits. And then I'm going to say I need to click a text which has something called as login in there on that particular page. So let's see how this page is even going to look like. So if I go to the page over here and then I'm going to say eaapp.sami.com, you can see that there is a login text over here. So I'm basically going to identify using the selector text is equal to login, which means it's going to go and click that particular login for me. That's a super simple way of doing it. Once it clicks, I then need to perform some entry operation. But before that, let's see what's going to happen if I try running this particular code. So if I hit run, you will see that the test is going to start running. Basically, for the first time, it is going to go and download all the drivers for me, like the Chrome driver, Firefox, Safari, everything. And it does the test operation. But we don't really see anything really happening interesting within our window over here. The reason being, by default, Playwright runs all the browsers in the headless mode. So this Chromium browser is actually running in a headless mode. And it's all defined in this launch settings. You can see that the launch settings, if I go near here, it gives you a lot of information. Well, in order to run this browser in a head full mode, I'm just going to go to this launch async method over here through the definition. You will actually see that it's going to have what is called as a browser type launch options as a parameter over here. So what is this browser type launch options? So if you go to the browser type launch options, it is basically a class which holds a lot of different property, mostly with a preset value in it. And you can see that there is something called as an headless is equal to clone dot headless. So what is this headless value? So if I just go to this headless, you can see that the headless value is somehow being set from a JSON property of headless. So where is this JSON properties even been coming? Don't worry about all these things. We'll be talking about that later on. But by default, the headless value is true. So in order to override this value, we need to just use this new keyword of the browser type launch options. And then we can just open and close the parentheses over here. And then we can start accessing all the properties that we just saw in the definition. And I'm going to say headless as false, which means I'm not going to run the code in the headless mode. That's what I'm really saying. And once I have this, if I start running the same test which I was executing before, you will see that the browser is going to open this time and it's going to even show me the page and it's clicking the login really, but you didn't really see what really happened. If I wanted to see what really happened after the login is being clicked, I can still use a super cool method called as a screenshot async, which is going to help me take a screenshot. I'm going to use the page screenshot options method or class over here where we can define some of the additional properties like path. I'm actually going to give what is called as EA app dot JPG, something like that. So that's the path. I'm just going to close and let's try running it again. So this is going to basically generate a JPG file for me once the execution is fully done. And then it's going to take the screenshot of the next page. Now let's go to the directory. So reveal in the finder. I'm going to go to the bin debug net. And you can see that there is a EA app.jpg file for me. Once I open, you can see that it has taken a screenshot after it clicks the login link. So that's what it really happened over here. And we can actually see everything is really working fine as expected. That's about the Playwright's super simple installation and getting started video. But in our next video, we'll see even more detail about how we can use Playwright even further to enhance the way we work with Playwright in terms of handling different browser options. And also, most importantly, the end in its power with Playwright. We will actually discuss all about those in our next lecture.